Shalom. I want to start off by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rechak Kodesh. Call Elohim La Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of the great millstone that we will. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom. All right. It says, uh, World Health Organization, who is one of the best investments? German FM blasts U.S. after Trump cuts health organizations funding. All right. Now, this is prophecy, man. Okay, now, why do I say it's prophecy? Because you have the beast hating the whore, man. Okay, because Germany is a part of that beast. Germany is a part of the NATO and the EU. Okay, the EU will represent the ten horns. And um, the NATO will represent the seven heads, man. Okay. Providing money to the underfunded World Health Organization is among the best ways to help develop a, max a vaccine against COVID-19. German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas has said after Trump halted the WHO's funding, a proportioning blame doesn't help. The virus knows no borders. Maas wrote on Twitter on Wednesday, we have to work closely together against COVID-19. One of the best investments is to strengthen the UN well, who, if you go into the research of it, when you look into who created the UN, all right, the ones who really are behind the UN is the elite banking families, man, all right, but they, uh, you know, they have puppets, okay, and they, and they, uh, issued it in through Franklin D. Roosevelt, man, okay, now you've had presidents that were, was against this, you know, but guess what, they got moved out of the way, man, all right. Because the elite banking families, they're going to, you know, they're going to have to implement their enterprise, man. All right. As we're approaching. OK, we're already in, you know, but we're approaching the final stages of it because that chip is on the way, man. OK. And they're looking to give you a digital uh, tag, if you will, through the vaccines to prove you took the vaccine. So what else? What else could that be, man? You know, you know, how about Shemiel Shai Radaza? That is the chip. All right. And once that chip is implemented, this place is through. Okay. And read it again. It says, we have to work closely together against COVID-19. One of the best investments is to strengthen the UN, which would mean what? A one world government, man. Okay. A one world government. And who wants to establish that? The secret council of the wicked, man. All right. What you people know as the so-called Illuminati. These elite banking families, man. All right. It says, especially the underfunded. World Health Organization, for example, for developing the distributing tests and vaccines. On Tuesday, U.S. President Donald Trump said that he would had suspend the funding of the World Health Organization pending a review to assess assesses the organization's role in a severely mismanaging and covering up the spread of the coronavirus. It says he accused the U.N.-led organization of failing to accurately report information about COVID-19 during the early stages of the outbreak. The U.S. had been among the WHO's top donors, contributing $893 million, or about 15% of the agency's current two-year budget. All right. Um, it says U U.N. Secretary General... Antonio Guterres criticized Trump's decision, saying that the middle of the pandemic is not the time for finger pointing and withdrawing support for the World Health Organization. China's foreign ministry spokesperson Zhao Lijiang told reporters on Wednesday that Trump's move against the global health agency will weaken the WHO's capacity and undermine international cooperation in the fight against epidemics. We urge the United States to thoroughly fulfill its responsibilities and obligations to support the WHO and its lead and academics response, Zhao said. And you know what also is beautiful about this is not just the beast is going to hate the whore, but the other, that these other nations are going to hate the whore, man. Okay? The scriptures talk about how, you know, Gog and Magog is going to turn their back on America. All right? The NATO and the EU is going to turn their back on America. It tells you how the other nations are going to turn their back on America, man. Okay? Everyone's going to turn their back on America. Let me get this real quick. This is Jeremiah 50, starting at verse um, 
third oh perfect jeremiah 50 starting at verse um dang man you can really read the whole chapter but i'm just gonna go straight to the point jeremiah 50 i'll start at verse 9 it says for lo i will raise and cause to come up against babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country and they shall set themselves in array against her white talking about what those alleys those allies of Russia, man, okay? The North Country represents Russia in the scripture, okay? It says, And they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrow shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. Talking about the missiles, man, okay? And it says, None shall return in vain. Because why? The Lord's Spirit is going to be guiding those missiles, man. All right, so even if you have your missile defense system, Esau, over here in Babylon, Okay, the scriptures talk about how it's a city of no walls or gates, man, meaning your defenses are outdated, man. Okay, and you have no defense pretty much. All right, because in Joel, the second chapter, it says that if it falls upon the sword, you know, it, it shall not break their ranks, man. All right, that's Joel, the second chapter, the sword meaning missiles, you know, so for your little missile defenses, you're not going to be able to defend those missiles, man. Okay, because Yahweh Hashem Shai spirit is in those missiles, and he's going to destroy this place. He swore on it, man. Okay, Jeremiah fifty. He gave his word. You know, when you go into the word the uh, bar in the Hebrew, which means word, it means promise. You know, check that out. <laughs> Jeremiah fifty and um verse ten, and Chaldea shall be a spoil. All that spoil her shall be satisfied, saith the Lord Yahweh. Right, and you can read about that in Ezekiel, the 38th chapter. It talks about how Ru these other nations is talking to Russia, saying, are you going to go and take a spoil, you know, of Babylon? All right, and the scriptures also tell you in the book of Jeremiah, the spoilers from the north, man. These countries are going to spoil you. Why? Because you're going to go to war, all right, and when they're going to destroy you, man, okay? Jeremiah 15, 11, because you were glad, because you rejoice, O you destroyers of mine heritage, because you are grown fat as the heifer at grass and bellow as bulls. Your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nation shall be a wilderness, a dry land and a desert. Your mother shall be confounded, right? You know, she shall be ashamed of you. She that bear you shall be ashamed of you as pursuing the Britain because Britain was the one who America stemmed out of when you go into the history. Okay, let's get that real quick. Revelation 17 going straight to the point. Revelation 17 and verse start at verse uh, 10. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen and one is and the other is not yet come. And the seven kings represent the seven heads. of the, And it was the Greeks, the Romans. All right. Well, I'm going to say I'm going to try to say it in my best order, I guess. Germ you had Greeks, Germania Minor, Germania Major. You had the French. The Spanish, and then you had the uh, British, okay, and then you also had the Romans, all right? So, like it says, five are fallen and one is. So, the one that was, was the Romans, okay? And it says the other is not yet come, pursuing to the uh, British Empire. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space, right? All right, and that's what that's exactly what it was. They had a short rule, a short space, lucky. Like Verse 11, and the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth and is of the seventh and goeth into perdition. That's talking about America. America comes out of the seventh. All right. Meaning the British Empire. It says and goeth into perdition. And we're reading how you're going to go into perdition because these nations are going to turn their back on you and they're going to shoot missiles at you. All right. Verse 12, and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have no which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Is not that what they're saying in the article? You know, they're saying right here, you know, we urge the United States to thoroughly fulfill its responsibilities and obligations to support the WHO in its lead academics response. All right. So what are they doing? They want to, like it says, give their give their um uh, so like it, give their mind unto the beast, man. You know, they're over here talking about how they should be supporting the U.N., and the WHO, you know, but there that's the beast, man, okay? That's the beast if you can receive it, you know?
It says, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And just to be just to make sure you know everything's uh, not taken the wrong way, the beast represents the NATO and the EU. Okay? But a part of that beast system is what? Setting up the uh, the wicked elites program, man. Okay? It says, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Okay? Right. Talking about the elect. All right? And there's going to be a literal war in heaven, man. Talking about in the upper atmosphere with the chariots, the so-called UFOs, and with the space force. Of these different nations, man. Um, verse 15. And he said unto me. The, I'm going to skip down to the point. Verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast. These shall hate the whore. And shall make her desolate and naked. And shall eat her flesh. And burn her with fire. Right. So the ten horns are going to hate the whore, man. Okay. The Lord's going to put it in their spirits. To turn their back on America, man. So this is all beautiful. Because this coronavirus is being a catalyst to many different prophecies, man. And you can see how in this prophecy, they can potentially hate America for this, man. Okay? So, 2020 is indeed the year of prophecy, whether you can receive it or not. It says, the U.S. remains the country hit hardest by the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm sure. With more than 600,000 confirmed cases, according to John Hopkins University, the Centers for Disease Control, CDC, and Prevention has CDC has a reported nationwide death toll of 22,252 on Tuesday. The largest hotspot is New York State, where more than 200,000 have tested positive for the disease. Right. And what's that going to show you? Oh, we need the vaccine. We need the vaccine. And, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemel Shai, you know, hey, we believe that that vaccine is more than likely the chip. But guess what? Even if it's not, it's going to lead to the chip. Everything is going to lead to that chip, man. All right. Everything is going to lead to the chip. And this is the perfect catalyst for them to set up their enterprise. Because why? They were they said how there was an article on RT News. that said that the, the basically American government wasn't planning for the economic collapse to be till about 2035. And they said that the coronavirus is rapidly making it come closer, man. Revelation 12 and 12, one ones of the world, you know, and them that dwell therein. Okay, let me get that real quick. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 12. It says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devils come down unto you having great wrath. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Okay. So Esau knows he has a short time, man. He knows his system is through. That's why he's trying to hurry up and implement this mark, man. Okay. And Bill Gates. Bill Gates is a Rockefeller, you know, and he's just trained up to do, um, he's just trained up to do what his lot was, man, you know, so, hey, that's the point, you know, but I want to get this one scripture, Lord willing, I'll close out, um, yep, call like him, like, how about Shemel Shai, all right. This is, um, I'll start at Psalms 101, starting at verse 1. A psalm of David. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, will I sing. Verse 2. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. And that's beautiful because we have to behave ourselves wisely, especially now in the times we're in, man. All right. Apostle Paul spoke about being circumspect, all right, and redeeming the time. I believe that's Ephesians, the fifth chapter. All right. All right, it's a lot. Let me just look and see if it's Ephesians. Come on, Ephesians 5 and 15. See that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Right. So how do we walk circumspectly, man? We watch after the prophecies, we watch after ourselves, we watch after the flock, we do the work, okay? We follow after Yahweh Bashem El Shai to the best of our abilities, all right? But as well, we're being circumspect within our surroundings and who we interact with and so on and so forth and how we carry ourselves, man. You know, Lord's will we carry ourselves like men of the Lord, man. 
all right? You don't want to just go out here, you know, and do some bugged out stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? And your Howard Bosch mouth try to dish you away. You know, you got to walk circumspectly, man. Okay? You know, you don't want to go up to, uh, you don't want, you, you don't want to go up to, uh, Esau and tell Esau you got the coronavirus, you know, jokingly. That's not walking circumspectly. You know what I mean? That's just a little quick example I can give. You know what I mean? Like Yahusha said, harmless as, ha, wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, man. All right? Psalms 101 and verse 2. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when thou wilt come unto me, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Right? So for you fallouts, you know. Verse 4. A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Who so privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. And that's what you do, Esau. You privily slander to his neighbor. You call us. Well, the scriptures call you the accuser of our brethren, man. All right. And what else does the scripture say? That you secretly shoot at the arrow, uh, uh, shoot at the poor in secret. This is Psalm 64. starting at verse 3. I'll start at verse 1. Psalm 64 and 1. To the chief musician, the Psalm of David, hear my voice, O Yahweh, by Shemel Shai, and my prayer preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, the elites, the Illuminati, so-called Illuminati. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect, right, man? Oh, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, or Native, they said the blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans are the leading face of the coronavirus, man. That's Esau secretly shooting at the poor, man. You know? Secretly shooting at the uh, at the perfect, you know. Okay, they 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 they're in secret trying to set up you, Jakes, man, to take you down. Okay, but that's all the judgment of the Lord as well. The scriptures call you the accuser of our brethren. That's in Psalms the fifty fifth chapter, man. Okay, Psalms fifty five, going straight to the point. Oh well, yeah, it's Psalm fifty five. Going straight to the point. Oh no, Psalms 50. Salakia. Psalms 50. Psalms 50. Starting at verse uh, 20. It says, Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, thy slanderous, thine own mother's son. Khan. All right? Slanders thine own mother's son. You know? That's talking about you, Esau. All right? And the accuser of thine brethren. That's in Revelation the 12th chapter. You know, I believe we read that a little. Oh, no, we didn't. Revelation uh, 12 and verse 10, it says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, and now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our power and the power of his Mashiach. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power day and night. Okay? It's lucky. That's you, Esau. You are the accuser of our brethren, man. Let's get another one. Habakkuk 2. Starting at verse 15, woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him and makest him drunken, also that thou mayest look on their nakedness, right? And that's what you do. You 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 feed our people your your witchcrafts and your vanities, man. All right? And then what? You go and accuse us to the most high, man. Look at your people, you know. Jesus, I want my birthright back. Head ass. You know what I mean? That's you, Esau. <laughs> You threw, man. Okay, and your how about Shemel Shai is gonna destroy you, devils? Let me finish off on the Psalms 101, Lord willing. This is Psalms 101 and verse uh five. Who who so privately privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath an high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. The Lord said you are a proud man, Esau. Okay, the scriptures call you the proud waters, you know, because you're going to come in like a flood. All right. But the Lord is going to lift up a standard upon you in that day when you are running into people's homes. And you have the WHO trying to say that they want people, to, uh, you know, that basically people who are self-quarantining, they want to be able to come into their homes and remove them and quarantine them themselves, man. You know, 
gonna be an it's gonna be a great insurrection upon them that fear the Lord, man. Verse six: Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. Right? Thou hatest all workers of iniquity, like the scriptures say. And the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. You know. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord Yahweh. By Shem Yahweh Shai, right? So you're gonna early destroy you devils, man. So, hey Esau, you know, don't be surprised if Yahweh Shai come back soon, man. You know, and I'm talking about sooner than you think. You know, but with that, I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Yahweh Double honors to the elders and apostles, the great millstone of the world. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel, Shalom, and a Baba Ball.